Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I am doing my June wrap up and my July TBR. So, starting with my wrap up, for the month of June, I read three books. Um, June was very busy because I was finishing up the school year and I had a couple trips that I took so reading was kind of there but like not there at the same time if that makes sense but that's okay so the first book that I read was Wild Love by Elsie Silver so I gave this one four stars if you've read Heartless the main woman in that story it this follows her brother and it's I think it's like a start to a new small town romance series thing that she's doing but it follows her brother um what's his name Ford Ford and he basically has been in love with his best friend's younger sister for like years and it isn't until she like moves back home after a really traumatic job experience that they get to like reconnect and basically fall back in love and then he also has a surprise daughter that shows up out of nowhere so if you like those tropes <laughs> this is the book for you i really enjoyed it i thought it was cute i will say trigger warnings for uh sexual assault especially in the workplace because that does happen to our main female character in this book. It doesn't get too intense, but it does happen. And so, just trigger warnings for that. But I thought this was a super cute story about just a man who's just trying to do his best as a newfound father. And then also trying to win the girl over, but also be respectful to her trauma. I really liked their dynamics because as kids, to avoid the fact that they both had feelings for each other, they just really ragged on each other the entire time. So when they meet again, they just pick that back up. And then the crazy part is they pick it back up, but he starts to like show his feelings and his intensity about how much he likes her. And it's just really funny to see her react because she doesn't know what to do. So, overall, four stars. I think I would pick up the next one eventually, um, whichever, depending on who it follows, and go from there. But I'm glad I picked this up because I really loved Heartless, and so I was really intrigued by her brother. And I'm glad that this was the first one in that series for him. Alright, the next book I read in June was Withering Heights by Emily Bronte. So this was a buddy read between Monet and Robin. And I gave this 2.5 stars. This was terrible. I am, like, not a classics person. So that's why we decided to read this because we're trying to read classics we didn't really get to read maybe in high school or whatever. Um, and so I've read a few classics. Like, I really enjoyed Pride and Prejudice. Um, I've... I've read War and Peace and I kind of enjoyed that and just some other stuff. So I was a little hesitant picking this up because I didn't like Jane Eyre, which is Charlotte Bronte, which is her sister. So I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about Emily Bronte's writing. And then I got into the book and I was like, I think just the Bronte sisters are not my cup of tea because I didn't like the Withering Heights either. I thought the characters were awful. I don't know if she meant to do that on purpose or not. But they were terrible. Nobody deserved a redemption arc at all. Like, they all, I kind of felt like they all just should have died at the end. <laughs> because there was just no coming back from all the terrible things and that they did and said throughout the book. So, it follows this family, I guess. And, well, I guess it follows this guy named Heathcliff. And he's, like, adopted into this family. And they treat him terribly but he falls in love with the daughter in the family but she basically like brushes him off and then marries somebody else and so years later he like disappears and he comes back and he's like super rich I guess and so the late he like basically torments the lady for like not waiting for him or something like that and out of revenge he marries her husband's sister and then torments other people and then he has a son 
and he forces his son to entrap her daughter into marriage and then it's it's like wild like the amount of revenge he was willing to go through and the amount of misery he put everybody through was wild for like one lady not wanting to marry you and so by the end of the book i'm pretty sure everybody was just miserable except for maybe two people but i still don't even know how that really worked but, but i guess it did yeah i don't even know how to describe this book to you i wouldn't recommend it <laughs> so I don't know, but I just, and I feel like Withering Heights has been sold to me as a love story. This is not a love story. I just want to tell you that now. It's not. It's a story of just unkind people and revenge. All right, and then the last book I read in June was The Blood Gift by Annie Davenport, which is the second book to The Blood Trials. I gave this one 3.5 stars. I'm not going to tell you details because it's the second book, but... I will say that I wish the publishers had let her make this into a trilogy. So it's only a duology because apparently the publishers didn't want another book or whatever. But the way the book ends, it deserves another book. Um, I think she may have left it like open-ended a little bit on purpose. But I just feel like the publishers made a mistake because the series is good. Like, I would have put my money into being like, okay, go ahead, write one more, one or two more books in this to finish it out. Because it's good. The story is good. The magic is good. The world building and the character building was good to me. So I don't understand why they didn't just invest in her more because I feel like that would have been great. I would have rated this book higher if there was a third book because I felt like with this book she had to condense so much into it since it was technically the end of the series and it just it didn't work it didn't flow the way the first book did but i'm not blaming her for that i'm blaming the publisher i feel like if she had done a third book at least we could have seen like a god war there would have been more like finality and so yeah i just again i just hate the fact that she didn't get to do that um i still enjoyed the second book i enjoyed the journey I, that it took to get to the end i enjoyed seeing some of the plot points in the first book being tied off i really enjoyed that and i will definitely pick up anything else this author writes at least in the fantasy element of of her writing and i hope one day like maybe she'll get to finish it someday i hope because i think it would be a really good story to continue so those are the books i read in june so i am going to go ahead and move on to my july tbr so july is my birthday month so i kind of just picked books that i have been either meaning to get to i i think some of these are rollovers from june because i didn't get to them and books that i think i'm gonna have a good time with and i just want to have a good time this month because it's my birthday month so the first book I have on this list is A Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle L. Jensen. This was a book I picked in June and unfortunately I didn't get to it so I'm going to roll it over to July and hopefully I enjoy it. I've enjoyed Danielle L. Jensen's Bridge Kingdom series so I'm excited to see what else she can do um, that is not in that world if that makes sense. Like not that I didn't enjoy that world but I just want to see what else she can do in other elements I guess. Next I have Gold by Revan Kennedy. I started the ebook of this and then the audio finally came out so I'm actually going to just restart through the audio <laughs> and hopefully that helps. I'm really looking forward to Goldfinch which comes out later this year so I definitely want to get gold read before then so I can finally be like I read it and Monet can stop making fun of me for not finishing. Next I have Powerful by Lauren Roberts which is the novella between the first and the second book and then I also have Reckless by Lauren Roberts on this list because it does come out in july as well and i will be wanting to pick that up and see what happens next after the events of parallel the next book i have is when the moon hatched by sarah a parker so this has been on my radar it was definitely a book i was i meant to read in june and i didn't get to it so i'm rolling over i have the audio ready to go i don't even really know what this is about i just know that it has some type of dragon in it and i know a lot of people have been loving it so 
we're going based off those vibes and hoping for the best. And the last book I have on the list is a book that I have seen a lot of people reference in videos lately and that is A Spark of the Everflame by Penn Cole. So I don't know what this book is about fully. I just know it's a slow burn romance. From what I heard, the love interest that our main character is with in the first book is not the one she ends up with. And so I really love stories like that. And so I really want to see what this could bring into my life and if this could be a new enjoyment. And uh, from what I understand, I think the last book in the series comes out in July. So even if I pick up the first one and like it, I feel like I could just read it straight through and then hopefully enjoy the series if that's what ends up happening. So yeah, those are all the books I'm going to be reading in July. Please let me know down below if you've enjoyed any of these books, if you also plan to read them. And if you like the video, please like it down below. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave all that in the comment section. And if you want to see more videos from me, hit that subscribe button. You are all sunflowers in a world full of weeds.